What's going on, leaders and influencers? So I want to share with you all some thoughts that I remember about my dad. So my pops died today, 11 years ago, and I want to share with you guys kind of reflecting back over the past decade and some change, some things that I miss about my dad. And then I've got a few questions at the end, but I've got at least 10 things I wanna share with you all. Um, so, just bear with me. It's probably gonna be a gamut of emotions in my journey here. Okay, number one, one the first thing I miss about my dad is, and this is really hits home as a recovering people pleaser addict. Number one, up he he had a perceived complete lack of care of other people's opinions. <laughs> Seriously, so my pops, we when we would go out for dinner, you know, we'd go to a Mexican restaurant, we'd go to some restaurant. And no kidding, it could be in the middle of the winter, it could be summertime. My dad was an ER doctor, emergency room physician, and he would wear his doctor scrubs. So that real thin, because he was, it was super comfortable. And what he would do is, he would cut off the pants to be shorts. And he had brown shoes, and he'd pull his black socks all the way up to his knees, and then he'd wear this Russian hat <laughs> that goes over the ears. And he would act like, you know, as we're walking to the car to go to the restaurant, you know, just be looking at him like, you know, in my head, like, Dad, are you not, like, do you not realize that, you know, in my opinion, and probably to a lot of other people, like, you look really funny right now. And then we'd go, we'd go into the restaurant, right? Go to the restaurant, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of, he didn't want to say anything, but like, kind of like, you know, he just, like, you know, just, just kind of bebopped in there. And, and again, as a recovering people pleaser addict, that is such an inspiration to, to, to just not care what other people think. And that's, and again, for, may, may not be a big deal for you guys, but that's a big deal for me. So number one, a, a, a lack of care of other people's opinions. Number two, his love of people as expressed a couple of different ways, but one through his hug. So you guys know I'm a second generation hugger. <laughs> so here's a story. He, a couple times, he invited me to the emergency room with him. So I go to the emergency room with him and He'd walk in. He was a big, giant guy. He was 6'3", 285, big, giant dude. And, you know, dwarf the nurses, dwarf the other docs. And, you know, so we'd walk in. I'm this little kid, junior high, walk in. And, I, you know, I'm trailing behind him. And I see as he goes through and hugs every single nurse. Boom. And I just saw how it made them feel. And even the the, the big fancy doctors and stuff uh, from other countries and that kind of thing, American docs, you know, all these different docs in the ER, he bear, he didn't care who it was. The janitor, he didn't care who, he he hugged everybody. And and then check this out. So boom, I'm sitting there behind the, 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 the there's a, the desk where all the nurses hang out at and the, you can see the window and then you can see the entrance of the ER. There'd be people that would be, you know, coming in the ER. No one's happy, right? Coming to the ER. They're, you know, crying or some of them screaming. And my dad would walk up. They could be stressed. They could be anxiety. Obviously, you don't walk into an ER because you're happy and positive and you feel good. And so these people stressed out. And my dad, now this is pre lawsuit days, <laughs> sort of, right? He would hug them. My dad would literally walk up to these people freaking out. Here's this big giant doctor, the white, the white fancy doctor coat, whatever, and just hug them. And 
they would melt. And I just got to see that impact. And so then once, once they were calm, like he hugged them and they completely calmed down the stress, the anxiety, the, the pain. It's like they forgot in that moment what was going on. And then once they were calmed down, he said, Hey, so, you know, you know, where does it hurt? You know, how can we help you? And, and he could, he could diagnose them so much easier. And I thought, wow, the power of that moment of that, hug, right? And then the next thing in terms of his, his love of people, he listened with his whole body. He was, he was talk about an active listener. He was, he was the poster child for active listening. He listened with his whole body. How many times do I fail at, at li- heck, and, and especially my own, with my own family, how many times do I not even give my, my, my whole body to listen to my wife, to my kid? And I just kind of listen, you know, off to the side or it just, and then I think of my pops and man, he just made you feel like the most important dude in the room. It was really cool. Number three, his intellectual, spiritual curiosity and the corresponding humility to go along with the intellectual, spiritual curiosity. So I would be, I remember junior high, I really remember when it started happening, junior high and high school. And my pops, here he is, he's literally brilliant. My, my dad was a genius guy, brilliant guy. And he would ask me questions. Hey, Noble, man, what do you think God is like? You know, like, you know, <laughs> I didn't even answer that. You know what I mean? What, what do you think God is like? And he really wanted to know. Well, no, but what do you think the relationship was like between, you know, Jesus and his mom growing up as a kid? You know, what, you know, man, dad, I, you know, I have no idea. Well, I mean, you know, think about it, you know? And and so he would just always be asking me these questions and he really taught me, modeled what intellectual and ultimately spiritual curiosity look like. So that was another huge thing. And he'd ask me about life. Hey, what do you think the meaning of life is? The purpose of life? Um... It was just, it was awesome. And, and the humility that it, that it made, it probably, t- I don't know if it, you know, but humility to ask your kid, hey man, what do you, what do you think about the meaning of life and really want to know? Number four, the th- fourth thing that I miss about my pops is willingness and desire to connect with me, even though he wasn't great at it. So my dad was a brilliant guy, but he was socially awkward, just a little bit. He was a little socially off. Um, you know, he's just big giant brain and he always wanted to connect with people, love people like crazy, just because, I don't know, because he was so intelligent, something he, he just, he just, um, had a tough time. So I appreciate the fact that he was willing to connect and what are some ways that he tried to connect with me? I, I love playing hoops growing up as a kid. And he literally, he, he built this log cabin. I'll explain that a little bit more in detail later, but so we moved when I was a sophomore in high school to a bigger town. Uh, not, it's still not that big, but for me, it was a big, big town at the time. And and he built this log cabin, this house we lived in, and he built a 10 foot regulation hoop inside the house. The house was built literally around this concept of this 10 foot regulation hoop just for me because he knew I loved basketball. And then we, so in the middle of the winter, snow on the ground, we'd practice hoops and he'd join me. He wasn't athletic. He wasn't coordinated. But he would still, he'd love to play basketball with me, shoot hoops, that kind of thing. So I appreciate his willingness and desire to connect with me, even though he wasn't really good at it. And I, and I appreciate it more now than I did. And I'm, I'm sad to say that. I wish I appreciated it more when he was around. And then he'd always ask me to do projects with him because he loved doing projects in the garage and building stuff and creating stuff. And I am, it's one of my regrets. I didn't take that time seriously, and I wish I had. So if you still have your, your, you know, a parent, a mom or dad or your parents, man, really savor that time with them. Even if it's something that you don't want to do, it's just something that they want to do. Man, savor that time. Number five, creativity, his creativity. He designed all kinds of stuff. So no kidding. You guys know the the razors, the, the 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 guys' razors, those plastic razors or metal razors that have the little. There's like a little a little foam pad in there that, that kind of wipes off as you shave. It wipes off the 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 shaving cream and stuff. 
Well, he he had designed one of those before it had ever come out in on the main market. Was that's so that's one thing he designed. He designed a suture again as an ER doc, a a a, a finger scissor while you suture. So literally, it was genius. So they may still be able to be made at some point, but so he's he made this thing where he is like a little metal sleeve around his pinky finger that had I think it was his pinky finger and that had a little little scissors on it. So when you're doing when you're suturing somebody, he didn't have to reach and grab a pair of scissors. He would just do it right there, bloop, and cut it right there. It was fascinating. So also his creativity. He had this amazing mind, this creative mind. Um, he was a welder. He he his ability to solve problems amazing. Number six his work ethic. He would work 12, 24, 36, 72 hour shifts for the ER, and then he would come home and study his medical stuff for another two hours before he would engage with the family. So we just knew as a family, hey, give Pop some time when he comes back, he'd kind of give his hugs, whatever, maybe grab something to eat, and then immediately go go hit, hit the medical books for two hours. And then once he was done with the two hours of studying, then he would you know get back, you know, engage with the family and stuff like that. But I just always remember, man, this dude's work ethic is insane. So it was just a crazy work ethic. Number seven, his love of God and of God's word, his love of God's word. So he memorized the whole book of John word for word. Excuse me. For those of y'all that are not familiar with the book of John in the Bible, it's not a small book. But that was my dad's favorite book of the Bible. I even did a video I don't remember when, but if you if you go back through some of my other videos, you'll be able to see I did a video on how he taught me to memorize. So if you want to be good at memorizing, and not just God's word, but if you want to memorize anything, but especially God's word, I did a video on how he was able to memorize the book of John and how he taught me how to memorize as well. Number eight, his mental toughness and pushing me. So check this out. Some of y'all will think this is funny. So no kidding, my dad, <laughs> this is nuts. So I was junior high. My dad said, hey, son, come sit down at the, at the, at the dining room table with me. I said, yeah, no sweat. So I'm sitting down uh, uh, next to him, and he's got his hand up with a little, to- little towel underneath. And uh, I'm like, dad, what are you doing? Maybe it was his right hand. Yeah, because he was left-handed. He had his right hand out. I don't know, maybe it was his left hand. He's left-handed, but I think he may have cut. So anyway, he had cut his left hand. And he cut the webbing. So you know, that, like the webbing right here, somehow doing some project, he cut the webbing. So it was split. His split the webbing was split. He's like, yeah, I want you to help me suture my hand back. I was like, hey, dad, check this out. I, I you know, because I was getting queasy just looking at it, right? Blood and it's split right there and it's not supposed to be split. And I'm in junior high. No, no, son, just calm down. No, I just, I need your help. I'm like, Dad, look, I, I, he's like, and I want to teach you how to suture. I'm like, Dad, I am not coming near your hand. I'm telling you right now, I'm not coming near your hand. Okay, he, okay, he said, okay, just just watch me because I want you to, to know how to suture. And so sure enough, no, uh, what do you call it, uh, anesthetic? Is that what you call it? You see my medical skills. Um, no, no, no painkiller, nothing. He picked up the old suture and no kidding, sutured his own hand back. And I was like, you know, I, I'm trying to process what I'm seeing, right? You know, just there's all kinds of layers to that, right? But, you know, the pain, how are you, how are you, you know, doing your own hand? You know, it was, anyway, that was no joke mental toughness. The second thing was, I remember we moved to this new town in in, uh, in, in my sophomore year in high school. And, and shortly after we got there, it's winter time, a foot of snow on the ground. And my dad's like, hey, son, let's go for a walk. And I said, yeah, hey, that's cool. You know, you know, Q2 with my pops, you know, some quality time. Give me a little hashtag quality time. If you guys are quality time, give me hashtag quality time. So, so boom, we're going out. My dad, so I'm getting, you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to put on my jacket. He said, no, 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 take off your clothes. <laughs> you know, I, was like, I was like, say what? I'm like, dad, it, there's a foot of snow on the ground. What, what do you mean take my clothes off? He said, yeah, just take all your clothes off except for your skivvies. Keep your skivvies on. No shoes, nothing. Let's go for a walk. And I was like, Dad, I, you know, okay, I, I'm not sure, like, what, what, I'm getting punked. Mom's got a video camera. She's going to watch, you know, I didn't know what was going on. Sure enough, 
we and we, we had a bunch of land and we go on we so we're going for this walk he's in his underwear no we had a they my parents had about 60 acres at the time so there were no neighbors just so you guys know like i could just imagine noble and his dad in their underwear walking in a neighborhood right no so this was this was in 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 uh this was not in a, in a neighborhood so there's 60 acres of woods he had made a, a path through the woods and so we were walking in the woods in our underwear, barefoot. We get about, no joke, 30 feet, and I'm like, Dad, I am freezing. What is going on? He said, Noble, tell me your favorite vacation spot. And I'm like, my favorite, you know, I'm trying, man, I'm freezing, but I'm trying, you know, he's like, no, no, tell me, what do you think? And so I'm like, well, probably, won't. and he took us to New Me or, uh, Mexico when, we, when I was a little kid, called Zihuatanejo is in Mexico, and I said, well, probably Zihuatanejo. So here, and here's what happened probably 30 to 45 minutes later, we finished the walk. And I did, he had, he had continued to ask me all these questions and keep my mind engaged. And I real when we get back, he's like, so how, how do you feel? I'm like, how do I feel about what? He's like, well, are you cold? I'm like, oh snap. I, I hadn't even, I had totally forgotten that we were outside, that we were, that, that I was cold because and he said, that's, that's just an example of the power that you have over your body, just some, some, you know, for your, some mental toughness stuff. And I was like, wow, never forgot that lesson. Number nine, Renaissance man. My pops was a Renaissance man. He self-taught piano, his two favorite songs, man, I'm giving you some inside skinny here. His, his two favorite songs that he taught himself that I, now I love. Moonlight Sonata and Furry Lease on the pianos. Psh, I love those songs because those are the songs that my dad would always play. He taught himself the Spanish classical guitar. He taught himself welding. He built our house. Literally, he built it's a, a log cabin uh, in the in the woods. He built the log cabin. Did the the poured the concrete. Did mostly electrical, the plumbing, like all self taught. Taught himself a couple languages. When he his first year of med school, he got overwhelmed. So when he so he took a year off of med school, and got his farm his farm D his his pharmacy degree his degree in pharmacy to be to be a pharmacist as a break in between med school. And, and then he went, and then after he got his farm B, then he went back to med school and finished med school. So anyway, he was on another level, but just a Renaissance man. He just, he had these interests in so many different areas and, and really love, you know, just love, the, that's another thing too. I don't have it on the list, but his love of learning just, well, I guess it goes back to the, the intellectual, spiritual curiosity. He had a hunger to learn, which I love. Number 10, I'm almost done, calmness and peace, calmness and peace. <laughs> so in, in my home, growing up as a kid, we were all yellers and screamers, okay? We, I'm not, whatever, it's just, it's what we did. My pops would never, ever yell and scream. He was so, he, well, there's two times he blew up, right? You always watch out for the quiet guys. So two times he blew up, but the rest of the time, he, he always stayed calm and, you know, mom would want to fight him, you know, the kids would want to fight him, but he never entered the arena with us. He, he was always so gentle. Excuse me. He would say, Hey, I, I, for whatever you're upset about, I am totally sorry. Let's be the first to love. I'm, I'm totally sorry. Let's be the first to love. And I'm like, dang, man, we're all emotional and angry and all this stuff. If you guys remember, there's a verse, Proverbs 15.1. Give me Proverbs 15.1 in the, in the chat log there, Proverbs 15.1. He would, th that's a gentle answer turns away wrath. A gentle answer turns away wrath. And I got to see it time and time again. My dad just never, it, it, there was even one, literally, I remember one conversation, my mom's like, just fight back. Literally, <laughs> she was all, I don't remember what we were all arguing about. And, and she, you know, so we're all trying to get my dad involved and chewing him out. And, and she's like, just fight back. And he, he, he would never, he just, you know, uh, he just stayed calm. <laughs> he just stayed so calm. So calmness and peace. And then wherever he walked, any room he walked into, it just, it was, 
everything just got calm and peaceful because of, of his presence. And, and he, we have completely opposite personalities, but that's the power of presence and, and, and the, the power of, of being. He, he, he was, he, yeah, he, he was a, yeah. So he, he, the power of his just being was very, was very powerful. It was palpable as well. So those are the 10 things that I miss about my dad. Um, his, perceived lack of care of other people's opinions, his love of other people as expressed through hugs and his active listening, his intellectual, spiritual curiosity and corresponding humility, his willingness and desire to connect with me as his son, um, even though he wasn't super great at it. Number five, his creativity. Number six, his work ethic. Number seven, his love of God and God's love of God's word. Number eight, mental toughness and pushing me. Number nine, the fact that he was a Renaissance man and just had the love of learning in, in so many different areas of his life. Number 10, his calmness and, and peace. And, and through all of that, his love of his family. Uh, he, 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 you know, that's, that, uh, outside of his love of God and God's word, love of his family was just expressed in so many different ways. And, and I'm so thankful that he, in the middle, we'd be driving somewhere and I remember he just pat mom on the, on the lap and then reach back to us kids and say, Hey, I love my family. I remember just out of nowhere. So that's his love of family would be point number 11. Okay. I've got three questions that I'm done. Number one, what will your kids say that they remember about you a decade after you are gone, what will your kids, what will your family say or your friends say that they remember about you? Next question, number two, what would you like them to remember about you? What would you like them to remember about you? And then number three, the third question is, what do you want as your family legacy? What do you want? as your family legacy. And as one of my tattoos says, whatever that is, be intentional. Whatever that family legacy is that you wanna leave with your, with your family, through your family, be intentional. Give me a hashtag, be intentional, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're still with me. God bless you all, love you all. I hope somehow it may have encouraged you. Um, and love to hear a thought in the in the in the in the comments below. Love to hear a thought of maybe what's your answer to that question? What do you want your legacy to be? I mean, really, genuinely, what do you want your legacy to be? So please put a, a thought, a comment, a couple a couple words in there of what you'd like your legacy to be. God bless you all.